The Afghan hospitals that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build and have never seen a patient. We'll ask what's gone wrong in the health service in Afghanistan and we'll debate who should be held accountable, the government or foreign donors. This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rida Fakhri. Foreign donors in Afghanistan are wasting millions of dollars building hospitals the government cannot afford to run. Al Jazeera gained access to one hospital built by Chinese contractors. It is so badly built, it is too dangerous to open to the public. Now the health ministry is trying to find private companies willing to run some of these hospitals. Bernard Smith has this exclusive report from Kabul. The maintenance man can't repair this leak because the Chinese company that built this hospital in Kabul three years ago didn't hand over any plans. No one knows how the plumbing system works. The Jamoriat Hospital was built with a grant from the Chinese government, but the construction work is so poor that it's been too dangerous to open to patients. The builders stuffed the wall cavities with polystyrene, just one of a list of defects that makes the facility too dangerous to open. Afghanistan's health minister is trying to find a solution. First of all, we are grateful to the government of China for its assistance in constructing this hospital and equipping this hospital. However, the assessment shows that the hospital needs some refurbishment and some equipment needs to be upgraded. Uh, so that will also require some resources, including financial resources and some efforts to upgrade the, the, the building itself, the construction itself, to um, re refurbish some of the equipment and, and uh, prepare it for a full use. Dr. Delil is being diplomatic. This exterior AC exhaust unit is mounted indoors. It's just one of a catalogue of defects listed in an engineer's report seen by Al Jazeera. Exposed radiators are touching the floor, so the plastic flooring will melt. Nothing seems to work. Millions of dollars worth of equipment is gathering dust. Even this operating theatre is a death trap. Ceiling tiles are always falling down. The report that Al Jazeera has seen concludes that it will cost $44 million in repair work just to bring this hospital up to international standards. But that is almost a third of the entire annual national Afghan health development budget, which is $135 million. It's money the Afghan government just doesn't have. So the health ministry is pinning its hopes on public-private partnerships. Essentially, it will subsidize private health companies to run the hospitals. I think that uh, in, the, in the rush and the attempt to increase the delivery of services, uh, a lot of, of building of infrastructure may have taken place without thinking through exactly what the implications are um, for the longer term sustainability. I think we now have an opportunity to rationalize that by thinking about what we do with hospitals um, that are built, uh, that are available, and how they fit into the overall system of healthcare that the government wants to put together. But this is a race against time. Only the Aga Khan Development Network has shown an interest in running Jamoriat Hospital. No bids have so far been invited to run the other 18. The government estimates Afghans spend $90 million a year on medical treatment overseas money that could be spent here. At the moment, there is a real risk that Afghanistan will be left with 19 unusable brand new hospitals. Bernard Smith, Inside Story, Kabul. Now, the costs of trying to rebuild the Afghan health service are high. Afghanistan's annual health development budget is $135 million. That doesn't include the salaries of medical professionals. As we saw in Bernard's report, it would cost $44.1 million just to fix Jumhuriyat Hospital. And at $60 million to rebuild it, it wouldn't cost much more to tear it down and start again. 
19 new donor-funded hospitals are expected to be operational in the next two years. That means an additional 2,900 beds. But to maintain these hospitals to international standards, Afghanistan needs $2 billion over the next 10 years. So why are Afghanistan's healthcare facilities in such a state? Well, to answer this, we're joined by our guests, all of whom are in Kabul today. Mohammed Hashem Wahaj is a member of the health board for the Afghan Chamber of Commerce. Dr. Wahaj is a medical doctor and the head of Wahaj Hospital. Farhana Farouki Stoker is the managing director of Afghan Aid, a non-governmental organization that provides humanitarian help and development. And Najib Manale, a political analyst and advisor to the Afghan Finance Ministry. Welcome to you all. If I can begin with Dr. Wahaj, just looking at the problems facing Jumhuriyat Hospital, what do you think should be the priority for the government? Should it be to rebuild it, to fix it? Do most Afghans need a state-of-the-art hospital like Jumhuriyat? Is this part of their priorities? Do they even have the human resources needed to run such a facility? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the first thing which our government should do is to ask the ex-health minister that three years before I mean, before the re-election of Mr. Karzai, he made a very huge ceremony and inaugurated the Jamuriat Hospital. And he proudly said, now we have inaugurated the biggest hospital in Afghanistan, and it will be for the service of Afghan people. So the first thing is why, when Jamhuriyat was not in order to operate, he made a such a speech, and Mr. Karzai inaugurated that hospital. And now we know that that inauguration was a fake inauguration. And we know that till and, and now and let me just point we are out hearing that, that the, the inauguration. Let me just point out the inauguration took place, and the hospital shut down the very next day. So let me just ask the question to the advisor of the finance ministry, Najib Manalai, who is with us. Why inaugurate such a facility in such a high profile event only to close its doors the very next day? Uh, well, I think uh, the Afghan government uh, did not its job uh, at the time uh, by the meaning that uh, uh, when the facility was delivered, they did not verify that they could run this facility. Uh, the facility was uh, overdimensioned for Afghanistan needs, and uh, the Afghan government, uh, in this case, as in many other cases, uh, did not think about the uh, running costs of such a facility, and uh, they uh, prematurely uh, inaugurated this facility. But why didn't the government think of these running costs? Are you aware? of any feasibility study that might have been conducted? Was there any kind of oversight whatsoever by the government? This is uh, one of the biggest problem in the Afghanistan development projects uh, set by, uh, 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 <coughs> implemented by uh, foreign aid uh, donors. Uh, they uh, think only about the uh, building of the facilities uh, and not the uh, maintenance and the running costs. Uh, and the Afghan uh, national budget uh, cannot afford uh, high uh, maintenance costs. And uh, that's why many uh, facilities uh, that have been uh, created uh, in several areas uh, are not functioning very well. And uh, this is uh, what justified the uh, request by the Afghan government uh, to the international community uh, to deliver aid through Afghan uh, national budget rather than out budget. Well, clearly, and Jumhuriyat is a prime example. Farhana Farouki Stoker, is this a failure of the Afghan uh, government, first and foremost, uh, the fact that it did not, perhaps, as many people might argue, carry out its duty to make sure that uh, these facilities were, A, needed, B, properly staffed and equipped, and, and C, that they could be funded in the long term? Was this their responsibility or was it also a lack of coordination, consultation between the foreign donors, in this case foreign governments and the Afghan government? I think nobody should be surprised uh, to hear the stories of um, white elephants which are built, um, whether it's uh, in Helmand, uh, the UK story which, is, which was run a few days back. 
Um, the problem has not been uh, with the one or two buildings. The problem has been with the development model, which has been, which is adopted by the international community in Afghanistan, where uh, the overarching characteristic of this has been militarization of aid. Aid has been contracted out to the military and to the private sector, who do not have the skill, the competence, uh, experience, or knowledge uh, to design and implement development projects. Uh, in fact, when you look at it, uh, in, they also establish federal governance uh, structures at the subnational level through uh, provincial construction uh, reconstruction team (PRTs) that hugely undermine uh, the government-owned uh, governance uh, capacities and institutions. There has also been lack of coherence among the donors' own policies and effort. Um, uh, when you uh, look at it, uh, I would also say that uh, the. Uh, the targets, uh, the ambitions that we set up right at the beginning in 2002 were perhaps too high uh, and did not take into account uh, the multiple realities of the context, which is not just a poor country, but which has had a protracted uh, conflict as well. But who sets uh, these targets, though? When, was, when was one of the main problems the fact that there wasn't enough Afghan involvement? Was there too much uh, keenness on the part of too many foreign players to build too much, to build what was visible, what was tangible, not enough focus on involving the Afghan partners they had on developing human capacity as well. Um, when you look at it, I think it's a, it's a very mixed story. There are different factors. Uh, the country was divided by the 47 nations whose troops were on ground. Each one of them uh, brought their own development uh, policy and their own uh, model of change and uh, development approach. There has been a uh, very serious lack of consultation with the community. Some of the very uh, simple and basic time-tested development principles uh, and, and best practices completely disregarded uh, in the last 10 years, which uh, includes, uh, among other things, consultation with the communities, ensuring that there is ownership of the government. Uh, one has looked at the sustainability of any uh, development intervention at the design stage to ensure that there would be resources, capacities, and institutional arrangements built in the process that would take over uh, any development intervention, whether it's a hospital, whether it's uh, micro hydro power uh, projects at the community level, roads, bridges. Uh, etc. There has also been an overwhelming uh, focus on uh, construction and very, very little attention paid to uh, human capital development and uh, particularly to the government own institution building. Human capital um, and perhaps as uh, well, if so I may interrupt you, Ms. Farooqi Stalker, perhaps also little attention paid to what Afghans needed most. Let me just ask Dr. Wahaj from a physician's perspective, would you say that most Afghans need these kinds of hospitals that are being built in Kabul, or do they need the more accessible kind of health facilities that may not be available? Uh, and are there enough trained staff for these facilities? I mean, how can this problem be overcome? Uh, first of all, I want to uh, uh, mention that Jamhuriyat was hospital inauguration was a political inauguration and the ex-minister wanted to get name and fame and to be reselected as a minister, which Karzai did it. The second thing, the Jamhuriyat Hospital was a hospital by itself, were one of the famous hospitals and it does not need it any much more capacity or it does not need it any more, I mean, running cost because now the Jamhuriyat Hospital, they are functioning in the barracks, which is beside that huge hospital. But the problem is that that when they they have been handed over, it was not uh, I mean completely it was not complete and it was not functional. The other thing is about the training of Afghan doctors. The government is completely ignoring the private sector. Now there are more than 65 private hospitals in Kabul. And all over Afghanistan, we have got more than 150 or 160 private hospitals. And they are introducing the latest technologies in Afghanistan, including MRI, IVF, ART, and all other technologies. And the government is completely ignoring these uh, private hospitals. And just uh, they are 
saying we don't have human resources, we don't have capacity. We have got more than 10 CT scans, CAT scans in Kabul run by uh, private hospitals. And the government has got only one CAT scan which is not running. It is in the boxes. They cannot, uh, I mean, uh, uh, fix it. So it we have got the facilities, we have got the human resources, but if the government tried to take the help of the private sector. Najib Manalai, is that a valid uh, bit of criticism? You've had billions of dollars in aid given to Afghanistan over the last several years. Why wasn't more money? Why weren't more resources invested in training medical staff in a way that would get them to, to have these types of facilities up and running? Why wasn't more done to train Afghan uh, capabilities, capacities? One thing that uh, made the international aid go astray uh, was the way it was uh, delivered. Uh, out of the government control and uh, f uh, in a parallel uh, structures. Uh, that's why uh, when the uh, facilities are made, they do not meet Afghan realities and they do not meet Afghan needs. Uh, a survey by uh, the uh, World Bank shows that uh, the aid spent through the government uh, budget is 85% uh, effective, while the way aid spent outside the government budget is only 15% effective. But why, that shows why, why that, uh, didn't the uh, government ask to have more of a say? The, the, gov the government, uh, the government uh, has asked uh, very early in 2004-2005 uh, uh, the international community to deliver this aid through the uh, to the uh, to the national budget, but the international community did did not uh, want to do that. Uh, this is something that's, uh, that that uh, went wrong with the aid, and that's why the Kabul conference in 2009 uh, set r new rules uh, for the aid delivery, which were unfortunately not yet uh, implemented. And uh, the Tokyo conference again reaffirmed these uh, new rules. Uh, but but without, e that, uh, without even uh, looking that far, just looking at this hospital that we are looking at today, Jumhuriyah, built by the Chinese, but there are many other hospitals built by the British and other players in Afghanistan today. There was absolutely no oversight by the Afghan government. The Afghan mm. government let the contractors do what they wanted, build the way they wanted. We saw that this hospital, in fact, was built to wholly inadequate safety standards. Wasn't it not, the responsibility only, of the government to make only, sure that these facilities were built adequately, at least? Not only yes, not only hospitals, but also schools and other facilities have been uh, built by the international community, uh, and uh, they did not meet Afghan uh, Afghan needs. Uh, I think when we speak about the uh, corruption in the aid delivery system, the corruption is not only Afghan. And uh, the case of Jamhuriyat uh, may be uh, one of the uh, very exemplary cases. Uh, they deliver a facility with uh, very modern equipment, uh, which is not functional. Uh, the only thing that uh, was delivered were the material, but not the know-how and the, uh, uh, the running facilities. Uh, that means that uh, the money spent through this uh, uh, project was not spent on Afghan uh, health facilities, but uh, was spent by, in the name of Afghan health facilities. Well, fine. You also touched on the issue of corruption. Farhana Farouki Stoker, let me ask you this then. Just how central is the issue of corruption to this whole debate? Uh, the very many different layers of contractors and subcontractors through which so much of the aid has had to be channeled through the years. How, how central is it to understanding the sorry state of the healthcare system? I think again, as I said earlier, it's a very mixed uh, story of development and aid in Afghanistan that one has seen over the last 10 years. It is the same international community who has provided billions of dollars in assistance over the last 10 years for uh, national programs like National Solidarity Program with the, its uh, coverage over uh, 40,000 villages. Um, uh, it, through this program, uh, community development councils are established which have really supported evolution of a new leadership at the grassroots level, more young, educated, more accountable leadership. 
Um, the same international assistance community has also provided uh, hundreds of millions of dollars assistance to, uh, to um, uh, millions of children, girls and boys both, who are today enrolled in schools and going daily. Um, also, when you look at uh, the healthcare story as well, uh, primary healthcare particularly, uh, uh, going from tertiary level that you have been talking, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have gotten better access to primary health care today, which was not there uh, well, 10 th years ago. There certainly ago. have been and some success stories. There have been success stories. But would you also agree that far too much money has been wasted, that there has been a problem of lack of accountability at the very least? But uh, I also feel that uh, with the withdrawal of the international military forces, this provides us a new opportunity to all the actors, uh, partners and stakeholders uh, to forge new partnership model for development uh, uh, story uh, in the country, have more long, uh, longer term projects uh, um, and sustained engagement and sustained uh, partnership with the government of uh, Afghanistan and its people here. Uh, sustainability uh, cannot be achieved overnight. Uh, similarly, uh, when you look at the new opportunities which uh, the withdrawal of international community is presenting to us, we could actually learn very serious lessons from the mistakes that international community has made in the last few years uh, so that uh, we, do, we, we correct our own uh, mistakes and uh, we write a different story which is uh, driven by the Afghans' needs, by their priorities, uh, institutional and uh, governance institutions, uh, particularly at the district and the provincial level, uh, they are uh, provided resources, they are provided opportunities of training uh, in uh, simple uh, areas such as plan uh, planning, budgeting, monitoring. Uh, if, if we could learn from the mistakes of the past and could rewrite a new story, I think there is no no reason why we cannot maintain the fragile but nevertheless very real gains that we have made in, in the last 10 years. Dr. Wahaj, would you agree that some gains have been made in the health sector and that some lessons have been learned by this government? There are very few gains. We do not ignore the gain, but the loss are more. The mood of delivery of healthcare was uh, below, I mean, standards, and the money which has been wasted on the health sector, it's very huge. We have got some places that 10 clinics are built, and we have got some villages that no clinic has been built. And the international community sh is more responsible for such uh, disaster and health of Afghanistan because they never ask the, our government what you need, what you want, and what we should do. And they have started building their, the hospitals, they have damping the machineries. We have got several machineries uh, sent by European, American, and other allies to Afghanistan, and now nobody can know how to install it. If it has been installed, if it goes wrong, nobody is here to fix it. So nothing, the government of Afghanistan was not consulted, and the government of Afghanistan also did not uh, ask them why you are bringing this or, or why you are not bringing that. And the buildings, now in Kabul we have got three such Jamhuriyat hospitals, and all over Afghanistan we have got more than 17 hospitals which has been built and not in use. So it was both the responsibility of government of Afghanistan and the international community to consult with each other and to find out what they need and what to be supplied. Najib Manalai and Mohammed Hashem Mohaj, thank you both, and thank you to Farhana Farouki Stalker. And thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Inside Story. Do send us your feedback at insidestory at aljazeera.net. I'm Frida Fakhri. Thanks for watching.